What is your name? Shannon Makes. What is your quest? To lead the cape enthusiasts out there through a fantastic sew along. What is your favorite sewing tool? My sharpest pair of scissors. Hello friends and fellow cape capators. If you were going to be turned into a fabric at the snap of my fingers, what fabric would you want to become and why? I hope everyone is excited and raring to go because it's time to start the first stage of our sew along. So let's all take a deep breath and grab a pen and paper because it's time to make a quick checklist. I spent last weekend making a mock-up of this pattern, you know, because I figured it was the responsible thing to do seeing as how I'm the one leading this thing, and I can now give you an official list of the materials that I'll be using. Obviously, if you're making a different pattern, your list may vary slightly, but keep your ears tuned to see if I list anything you might have forgotten. If you think I've forgotten anything, let me know and I'll pin it in a comment below. Number one, we'll need our pattern. This seems quite obvious, but nonetheless, make sure you've got your pattern chosen out and in hand. Number two, you'll need your fabric of choice. If you're following along with me, that means not only a fashion fabric, but also a fabric for the lining. Capes are the perfect opportunity to add a bold color as a lining. Well, I don't know about you, but I love seeing a little flash of color as the cape catches in the breeze. Let's add a little note here to make sure that you wash your fabric if you're planning on doing so. For most fabrics, some kind of washing treatment is recommended, although the details may vary, and I've already seen some great discussion on this topic in our Facebook group. Number three, interfacing. Okay, if you can't get your hands on interfacing or you can't afford it, don't let that stop you from making a cape, but I would strongly advise that you use some if you can, or that you replace the interfacing with another form of stabilizer for some strategic parts of the cape. The good news here is that most capes won't require very much. Points to note, there are many kinds of interfacing. I personally prefer this woven kind, but I also know it's harder to get your hands on, so this non-woven type is another alternative. There are also different weights of interlining meant to go with different weights of fabric. Again, these might not be available in all areas, and you might not have a wide selection to choose from, and that's okay. Some interlining or reinforcement is definitely better than none. But if you do have a selection, try to choose the weight of interlining that matches the fabric you're working with. Number four, thread. Most of us will choose matching thread, but contrasting stitching can also be a nice touch. Choose the type of thread that's appropriate for your construction method, whether that's machine sewing or hand stitching. I will most likely be finishing my buttonholes by hand, so I've added buttonhole twists to my list, but mainly because I happened to come across a huge box of it for mere pennies at a thrift store. Number five, buttons. This pattern calls for 10 buttons that are one and one eighth inch big. That's 2.8 centimeters for the rest of the world. I'm gonna go ahead and give you all permission to use those dimensions as rough guidelines. If you fall in love with a set of buttons and they're in that general ballpark, it's gonna be fine. Go for it. Also, I want to note that I will only be using eight buttons rather than 10, and I will touch on that in the mock-up portion. Number six, twill tape. The Vogue pattern doesn't call for this. It's a personal edition of my own, but I like to reinforce certain parts of the pattern with a little bit of twill tape, roughly half a centimeter wide. That's a quarter inch. Twill tape is one of the notions that I find the most in dumpsters and thrift stores, so I have a ton of it. But if you don't have it or don't want to use it, a bit of interfacing will work just as well. Number seven. This is where my list of materials stops, but I know that many of you out there are making a wide variety of patterns, so here's where you add those other items in. For some of you, that might be soutache braid or velvet trim. For others, it could be interlining for added warmth. And if you're doing some heavy tailoring of lapels and collars, it could be tailoring canvas. 
I'm a nosy little mouse, so let me know in the comments what the coolest or most unique miscellaneous material you'll be adding to your list is. And number eight, are you subscribed? Have you joined me over on the gram so we can all share photos of our works in progress? Did I seriously just add a little box for this item to my list? Absolutely. I have gone ahead and made a cute little printout if you'd like to use it. It's available for free over on my coffee page and the link is right in the description. It has all the various steps of the process written down so that we can all communally have the little dopamine hit of checking items off as we work. So go through and make sure you have everything you need, bonus points for stash busting. I know some of you are doing the 30 yard challenge by Pink Mimosa by Jacinta on Instagram, which is fantastic. And some of you might be doing some creative piecing from what I hear, which is a process that gets me strangely hyped up. And once you've got everything all assembled, or at least ordered, go grab some muslin or old bed sheets because while you wait for any deliveries to arrive, we'll start to make our mock-ups. And even if you don't plan on making a mock-up for yourself, seriously just bop on over and give it a watch because I might cover some things that you hadn't considered and I'd like to give you some food for thought. See you soon! Whoa. Whoa. Whoa.